Hey, good evening, everyone. Welcome back to Weather for Weather Geeks, another in-depth look at our current weather, our weather in the near term, and we'll take a look at the longer range as well uh, coming up in this video this evening. Real quickly before I get to today's weather, I uh, mentioned this on 21 News at 6, and I'll be posting about it on social media here in a little while. Really good pass of the International Space Station this evening, almost right overhead. Now, some of us still have a lot of clouds around, but we're, where the sky is clear enough, where you live, hopefully you'll be able to see this. This starts at 947, uh, coming out of the southwestern sky, going almost right overhead, and then exiting in the northeastern sky. This lasts about six minutes, this pass, starting at 947 this evening. If you've never seen the International Space Station flying overhead, uh, it kind of looks like a, almost like a really fast-moving airplane. In, in a bright airplane, um, but uh, it is the International Space Station uh, where scientists are live on board doing experiments and uh, sending us all sorts of great information, and uh, it's really cool to watch it uh, go overhead, so I uh, encourage you to check that out if you can tonight. Hopefully your sky is clear enough. And boy, it took most of the day today, but finally we, we've seen the sky clear some over the last few hours, particularly north of Route 224. Even now here in the 7 o'clock hour, down into Columbiana County, the clouds are trying to thin some. But definitely we've had the most holes in Mahoning County and especially up into Trumbull County. Still pretty overcast in western Pennsylvania this evening. So it's been a slow go today. Today, of course, was warmer than yesterday, but still below average. Upper 60s right now. Average is about 73, 74 here in the first week of June. But yesterday's high was only 51. So we're heading in the right direction anyway. Look how chilly it is up in New England. Really doesn't feel like summer at all up there. Contrast that with the southwest, where Phoenix reached 104 earlier. Phoenix at 102 here at uh, in the 5 o'clock hour. Uh, I think maybe it's the 4 o'clock hour out there uh, in, in Phoenix. Arizona does not observe daylight savings time. Uh, just a little fun fact for you. <laughs> this warmth out across the middle of the country is going to start to migrate east. We're not going to see the 90s or 100s, but uh, we will have a shot at 80 a few times during the latter portions of the week and heading into the weekend. All right, tonight's going to be a calm, quiet night. Tomorrow is going to be a pretty calm, quiet day as well. Just a real quick glance at uh, tomorrow's weather map. Uh, here's midday tomorrow, showing you what the radar should look like. Also, the isobars or the lines of equal pressure are plotted up here. High pressure centered over New England during the day tomorrow, and that's going to deflect moisture off to our south. So tomorrow, uh, kind of a showery day in, in D.C. and Baltimore, Richmond, maybe Virginia Beach. But uh, we'll be high and dry here with a mix of sun and clouds, and temperatures tomorrow will be better. We'll get a few degrees above average even tomorrow with a high of well, 76, 77 on average for our Wednesday. I think Thursday is also a pretty uneventful day. Here's Thursday afternoon. What we're going to see happen here is... We're going to start to see moisture trying to increase a little bit from the southeast on Thursday. And I've got a 20% chance of a late day shower or a thunderstorm in my forecast, but boy, I wouldn't count on that. Most of us are going to stay dry on Thursday. I do think there's a somewhat better chance to get wet Friday afternoon. Here's a look at Friday's map. Uh, cold front slipping in, and boy, I even hesitate to call this a cold front. There's no cold air behind it, colder air. It's pretty much just a wind shift and a little bit of a difference in the moisture content in the air on either side of the front. And this boundary may be just enough to spark a shower and thunderstorm in a couple of spots Friday afternoon, Friday evening. Uh, after a, a modest increase in the humidity Friday, the air behind this front that's pushing in for Friday night and Saturday should be somewhat less humid. So uh, overall, pretty nice start to the, uh, to the upcoming weekend. Here's a look at Saturday's map on the GFS. I think high pressure over the northern Great Lakes is going to keep us dry for most of Saturday. We, I, I, I reduce the chances of a shower and thunderstorm in our forecast, and we might have to take it out altogether. So if this trend continues on our latest computer models, we might just make Saturday a dry day, and our forecast could be a real nice start to the weekend with only modest amounts of humidity and comfortable temperatures. So uh, Sunday at this point uh, does look like the, the half of the weekend that might be a little bit wetter. Uh, here's a look at Sunday afternoon with showers and thunderstorms advertised here by the GFS model. Uh, some of the other models have some different ideas. Forecast gets a little tricky in the longer range. There's a lot of model differences on the timing of, of features. Overall, pretty typical June forecast, I think, heading into the medium range late this weekend into next week. But when it rains, when it doesn't, there's, some, there's definitely some model challenges uh, to be had out there. All right, a uh, quick look at the longer range. Latest GFS Ensemble model uh, showing us the temperature anomalies here in the 10 to 15 day range. This will take us from 
June 12th through uh, June 17th, so right straddling the middle of June. The model is advertising a pattern that doesn't favor much cooler than average weather. We might end up pretty close to average or maybe a little above average for that five-day period right around the middle of the month. So I think June, if you've watched my videos lately, I think June may end up a lot like May. It'll probably ultimately be a warmer than average month. Uh, maybe not quite as far above average as May was. May, we had the sixth warmest May on record here in Youngstown. June may not be quite that warm compared to the averages, but... Uh, it should end up on the positive side. It doesn't look likely at all that we'll have a cool June. So if you're longing to uh, you know, put the pool to good use, we should have a pretty good month for that. That's the Tuesday evening weather for Weather Geeks, everyone. Thanks, as always, for watching. I will uh, be posting, as always, on social media throughout the evening with interesting stuff, including the space station and anything I see interesting going on in the weather. Uh, follow me on Twitter, Eric WFMJ. Twitter's a lot better for getting weather updates than Facebook. If you're a longtime follower... Uh, you know my rant about Facebook and the and the feed filtering stuff out. But anyway, get off my soapbox and wish you a good Tuesday night, and I'll see you right back here for more Weather Geeks Wednesday evening.